Hello and welcome back. I'm Kirsten Foss and I'm really glad you're here at Spa Business Mastery. So today's topic is three ways to improve your team communication. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because when we have a team in the spa industry, communication is like the most important thing that we need to focus on. Because if we don't have really solid, uh, clear communication and a method of delivery, then boy, does that ever uh, make things a lot more complicated as a spa owner and as a leader. Um, and it makes a, it more complicated for your team as well. So it's super, super important that you have a communication system. That's what we're talking about today. Now, I think if you are a new, um, new to having a team, if you're planning on having a team, this topic will come uh, in, a, in a timely fashion for you because you don't have team members yet. Um, and this gives you an opportunity to set up your communication um, so that when you are onboarding your new staff, that it's just, this is just how the way we do things. But that's not to say that if you have an existing team that you can't uh, improve your team communication. And, and you know, I really feel that um, most teams would absolutely, you know, uh, be thrilled if the communication got easier and more effective, because that just makes their jobs um, much more efficient as well. So, you know, if, you know, if we, if you don't have great communication with your team, um, it can absolutely make or break all your business goals, because, it's everything is hinged on the team delivering their own outcomes to their clients. So their client results, um, you know, uh, guest satisfaction. But again, if we aren't communicating with our team members very well um, or things are getting dropped, then it makes their job a lot harder, which in turn affects the whole business. So most spas and med spas run their run their business on shift work, uh, meaning that, you know, some if you especially if you have a larger team, some of your team members might not, you know, if they're full timers or part even part timers, some might not even see other part timers. Um, and yet, as a leader, you, you need to make sure all team members are, are getting the information that you need them to know. So I think for the most part, uh, if you are in an ex existing spa or med spa, you probably already have a communication uh, delivery method, um, but it might need to be tweaked and made more efficient because one thing I know for sure is that uh, spa owners are notoriously not tech savvy. And when you guys find a piece of uh, you know, a piece of tech or a way to do things that works at the time, you tend to kind of get in a good rut and stick there, even when uh, it's not working really well for you anymore. So maybe today this will prompt a few more ideas for you about how you can improve your team communication. So let's dive into this because uh, what I know for sure is clear communication absolutely affects the bottom line in your business. All right, so let's talk about some pain points first, what you might be experiencing. Um, and these are three pain points that I see over and over and over again with spa owners and spa managers, okay? So the first point I wanna make is that quite often when we communicate with our team members, if we're not being very, um, if we're not really aware of it, sometimes, Spa owners and spa managers can be actually sharing too much personal information or too much business information with the team that isn't appropriate. Now, this often comes across as, you know, just trying to keep, you know, keep the team in the loop or share information with them, you know, making them feel uh, included. But, but, but this actually will almost always backfire on you, whether you realize it or not. How it backfires is that if you are, you know, happen to share with the other team members, just kind of in the back room while everybody, you know, if they're having lunch, you know, if people are chatting about something about the business and then you start off with a complaint or a little bit of a rant or a vent that sets the stage, unfortunately, for your team members. They think that it's okay to do that. Now, I know that being a spa owner or spa manager can sometimes feel really lonely because you've got all this information and ideas and stuff you want to talk about and things that you're doing um, that they might not know about. But the fact of the matter is, is that 
those are leadership conversations that need to stay within the leadership boundary. And the only person or people you should be sharing business or personal information um, about is with, you know, if you're a spa manager, then you share it with your spa owner. If you are a spa manager, then you need to have somebody in your world that will support you with this. So if you need to share about um, spa business, or if you need to share about business stuff, then get a coach or a mentor. If you need to uh, share about your personal stuff, then get a therapist that those are the appropriate or, or with a, spend time with a girlfriend and vent there. Those are the appropriate places to share your leadership um, frustrations, concerns, you know, just even just just general sharing, you know, maybe it's even positive. Uh, maybe you have an idea that's really cool. Um, however, if you pitch it to your team way too early, they could actually get freaked out. Or if you pitch it to your team too early and you don't end up doing it, they kind of see you as kind of flaky. So keep those leadership conversations within the leadership boundaries. Okay. Do yourself a favor. Um, what you really are doing is just making sure that you are leading the troops in terms of what I expect for behavior. Um, in my business, I don't want any gossiping. I don't want any venting. Um, there's just no room for that kind of drama. We don't need it. It's not needed. So that is my first uh, like piece I wanted to share about pain points. Um, the second pain point I find about teams, spa teams and communication is that it's the communi actual communication delivery is quite disorganized. Um, I know a lot of spas are using just a group text to, to communicate uh, a message. Sometimes they're just sending an email to their whole team. Um, sometimes they're using WhatsApp, but again, it's a group text. And unfortunately, you end up just with, you know, especially if you have a larger team, it might work for a smaller team, but um, with a larger team, if it's just one thread, <laughs> one email, uh, those get buried. People tend to reply not to all, but just to one person. And then one, the only one person, you know, who sent it gets the reply back. Um, so it, it just can leave lots of space for holes and gaps in your communication. So it's really easy for a team member just to say, well, I didn't see that. So the whole point of having a clear communication system is to make sure that there is no way that a team member could ever say, well, I didn't see that. I didn't get it. Okay. The third point I want to make in terms of what's broken in the spa industry with team communication is that as a spa owner, I know you don't like, I don't, I know you don't love tech and finding new uh, pieces of technology that make your business in, in, easier. And the reason why you don't like it is because you're not super comfortable with all the features and what they do because that's quite overwhelming. And so you're also very comfortable in what you're already doing. And that feels better for you than having to spend time learning something new, like a new platform. All right, so how do we fix these things? So the first thing I want to do, I want to share on that first point about leadership and kind of oversharing is to absolutely make the decision in your own mind that you will keep that information to yourself or share it with only the appropriate people that should know that, okay? That will definitely help clear up the air in terms of what's expected and of conversation that happens in the back room or in between clients, between team members. So we just wanna, we always want to, um, as a leader, we need to set the example, okay? So cut out any kind of personal stuff that you're talking about and definitely don't talk about business stuff unless it's it's ready to be pitched to the team okay all right number two second way to improve your team communication is to pick up to pick find a better platform to share your messages on so i'm going to i'm just going to say it if you have a, a a team more than you know four or five people uh having a group chat is you're just it's not going to um it's not the level of communication that you need at that point. So I would be definitely recommending that you're, you, you're looking into um, other software like Slack, uh, Voxer. Um, you could even use Google Hangouts uh, for this. That's free. And simply, you know, there's going to be, you're going to need to not just have this big long chat 
um, group chat, but with um, Google chats, you can make some uh, separate group chats for topics so that, you know, perhaps, um, you know, I definitely feel like as a larger team, you need to have these kind of what I call channels, or we use that in Slack. I personally use Slack in my business, but you want to have these other channels that are topic focused. So, you know, the channel could be 911. That is, you know, this is emergent. This is what people, you know, people on the team need to see this. If it's under 911, that means it's urgent. Um, perhaps there's another channel or group chat called inventory and the you know, the whole team is in there because that has to do with what needs to be ordered, uh, what's low, uh, what we're noticing, we're going through faster. So at least if you have separate group chats and everyone's in that, um, then it's a, it can be a little bit more organized. Um, all right, what else? I definitely say um, avoid email when communicating like this, because we all know that we all get a lot of emails, things get buried in there. And like I mentioned before, you know, if you're sending it to the whole team and, you know, it's not, a, people aren't replying all and they just reply back to you, then other people are missing what's happening in the conversation. Um, okay, number three, uh, as far as how to improve team communication, include team communication in your staff handbook as far as a policy. So that when you have new team members onboarding and you go through your staff handbook with them, it's very, very clear what you expect in terms of how you will be communicating and how they will be communicating. And of course, um, I would say that it's you always need to have that open door policy so that if any team member wants to uh, have a have a one on one with you that you are absolutely open and available for that. Okay, I wanna give you a little bonus tip as far as team communication. Um, anything that is communication that has to do with problematic behavior, and I'm talking about um, if you've had an issue with a team member over and over and over again <laughs> about something, you know, maybe it is a skin therapist who is not consistently filling out her skincare prescriptions after the, you know, when she's finished with the client and not giving her, her recommendations. So if that is, is something like that is happening, please do not communicate within a text. That needs to be a one-on-one -on -one meeting booked to have a face-to-face -face conversation. Um, I know that having difficult conversations is difficult. I get that, um, but as a leader, it is your responsibility to have these difficult conversations and you do not want to do these over text um, or Slack or however you're doing them, but you don't want to do this over text because we just, you know, as humans, we can't take, you know, we take um, nonverbal cues as well as the verbal. And so when we're doing this via text, I can't pick up what your verbal cues or nonverbal cues are. And so it's very easy for people to take things the wrong way. Um, it's easy for you if you're just trying to quickly say, you know, if you're trying to quickly get out a message about this is bugging you, it's easier to do that than to have that conversation. So don't, you don't, you don't, doing the easy thing is not always the right thing. So if you do have to have, you know, something's bugging you about a team member, please, for the love of Pete, just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It's way more respectful and you can get way more accomplished in that conversation bef before they leave. Whereas if we have conflict in a text message, that, that's just easy to kind of take it the wrong way, you know, not answer it, leave it or say something really crappy back that you really didn't, that that person really didn't mean. So just do yourself a favor and have those difficult conversations one-on-one. -on -one. All right, that's it on the topic of team communication. I hope that you found something valuable in there. Maybe there's one little nugget that you can tweak your own communication system with. Um, and if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me at Kirsten at KirstenVoss.com or any of the social platforms that you're watching this on. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next time.